this video, I'll show you how to quickly identify three different types of official U.S. military markers in historic cemeteries. Now, along the way, I will be sharing some really surprising facts and some historical tidbits. This is a very jam-packed video, so you'll want to watch it all the way to the end. Uh, before we get going, though, I want to say that if you have served in the military, thank you very much for your service. And now, to all of us, let's hit the road. America's first official stone military markers were created shortly after the Civil War. America's Civil War ended in 1865, and prior to that, soldiers were often buried with simple wooden markers. By the way, did you know that more lives were lost in the American Civil War than in any subsequent war or military action that the U.S. has been involved in? Crazy, right? If you knew that or you didn't, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's the reason that when you study historic cemeteries here in America, you end up learning about the Civil War. You really can't help it, because the Civil War had such a major impact on our burial customs. In fact, I'll, I'll do a whole video about that another time. It's actually pretty fascinating. And I'm not someone who's particularly interested in war. So the first type of official military headstone was adopted by the U.S. War Department in 1873, and it's commonly called the Civil War Type. Civil War Type markers are pretty easy to identify. They're made of white marble, they're 4 inches thick and 10 inches wide, and they're rounded on top. As you can see, the front face features a carved image of a shield. This design is usually carved into the stone with a soldier's information and in raised lettering, but sometimes the shield is simply engraved as an outline. As far as information about the soldier, it really does vary but often you will see the soldier's name, rank, and home state inscribed on the marker. Now, it's hard to fit all that information on these stones, so you will also notice that they get pretty creative with the abbreviations. As for height, the regulations state that the above-ground portion on the Civil War type marker is supposed to stand 12 inches high, but when you visit historic burial grounds, you may notice that these markers are often taller than 12 inches. I think that sometimes the people who placed the markers didn't understand just how much of it is meant to be underground in this style of marker. You really need to put a lot of it into the dirt to make them stable. But here's something that really surprised me. At first, Civil War type markers were available only for Union soldiers. You know, the Union soldiers, those are the guys who fought for the North, wore the blue uniforms, and won the war. However, even though it's called the Civil War type, this style of headstone was eventually used to mark the graves of soldiers from the Mexican War, Indian campaigns, the War of 1812, the Spanish-American War, and even the American Revolution. Now, you might notice a rather glaring omission. That's right, Confederate soldiers. You know, the guys who fought for the South, wore gray uniforms, and lost the war. But uh, that's one of the reasons why you can see Confederate monuments in various cemeteries and around public buildings, especially here in the South where I live. I'm in Texas. In 1906, Congress passed a law to provide official military headstones for Confederate soldiers, too. Even so, you'll notice that these headstones are different from Civil War-type markers. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. As you can see, the Civil War-type 
and the Confederate type markers are you know, pretty similar at a glance, but the quickest way to tell them apart is that the Confederate markers come to a point rather than having those rounded tops. I'm not sure why the U.S. War Department chose that distinction, but more than one historian has told me that the reason Confederate soldiers' monuments are pointed is to quote-unquote keep those damn Yankees from sitting on them. Now, if you look a little closer, you're going to notice that Confederate markers have an interesting emblem carved into the top. You see what I mean? Here's a closer look. This is called the Confederate Cross of Honor, or the Southern Cross of Honor, depending on the source. The CSA stands for Confederate States of America, and sometimes it will include the Latin words Deo Vindice, which means, in Latin, God as our victor. Of course, you know, these guys did lose. I mean, I'm just saying. But in the middle, that C-shaped image that you see that's meant to be a wreath. It stands for remembrance. And that's why we do memorials, is for remembrance. Now you'll sometimes see the Southern Cross of Honor in the form of an iron marker at a veteran's grave. And here's one, too, that I saw for someone who fought in the War of 1812. And you can see these iron markers for uh, many different battles, even, and wars. Shortly after World War I, a new design was created for U.S. military markers called the General Type because the committee which created it included two generals. This style of military marker remains in use to this day. And the two generals that I'm referring to on the committee, they included John J. Pershing and Quartermaster General Harry L. Rogers, just so you know. The general type is a military marker 4 inches thick, 13 inches wide, and the above ground portion measures 42 inches tall. As always, the above ground height will vary in the real world. As you can see, the top is rounded slightly and the face is inscribed with a soldier's name, rank, regiment, division, date of death, and home state. In addition, the general type of military marker allows something new. It allows space for a religious emblem. At first, the only choices were a Latin cross for Christians and a Star of David for Judaism. The list of available religious emblems has really expanded, however, and as of 2013, it now includes emblems for everything from atheists, druids, Zoroastrians, Odinists, and many, many more religious faiths. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that modern cemeteries often do not have any tall markers anymore. And if you've read some of my books, like Grave Goods or Understanding Cemetery Symbols, then you already know how and why cemeteries changed, especially after the Great Depression. So I won't go into detail about that now, maybe in another video, because that's another interesting sideline. But what I will say right now is that the War Department did realize that the general type marker wasn't going to work for everyone these days. So they have also created some flat markers that people can use. They have bronze ones like this. And they have marble ones like this. And as you can see, both of these, the bronze and the marble, they lay flush to the ground. And this is so lawnmowers can pass over them or next to them. And that makes it much easier to upkeep cemeteries. Of course, it should be noted that veterans aren't required to use official military markers. These are provided upon request out of courtesy and to make sure that veterans are not in unmarked graves. So when you visit a historic graveyard, don't just assume that the veterans are only going to be buried in plots where you see these official government markers at their grave sites. So you want to watch for cemetery symbols that will let you know that a person served in the military, such as American flags or crossed swords, military weaponry, cannons, cannonballs, 
you know, military motifs of different sorts. And now I have a couple questions for you. First, would you like me to create a video showcasing some of the most interesting military monuments and soldiers' graves that I have seen around the world? Let me know with a yes or no in the comments below. And secondly, do you know what the month of May and 3 p.m. have to do with Memorial Day? I'll be talking about that and other strange Memorial Day facts in next week's video, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when it comes out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.